Well, welcome to Mining Now. And we explore the latest in technology, innovation, and leadership across the mining industry. And I'm your host today, Roy Slack. And in this episode, we're going to be talking leadership for sure, because we are featuring B2 Gold. And we're talking with Ken Jones, who's Director of Sustainability. And, and welcome, Ken. Thank you, Roy. Pleasure to be here. And always like to start out by finding a little bit about yourself. And so uh, tell us about your background, how you got involved in the industry and how you got involved with B2 Gold. Sure, sure. Um, so I've been with B2 Gold for 12 years now. Um, I joined uh, as their HSE manager back in 2012. Um, and now uh, in charge of you know CSR and environment uh, as their head of sustainability. Um, and I've been in the industry, though, uh, for, for 15, almost 20 years prior to B2. Um, I was an environmental consultant, um, got into the industry actually with Knight Peacehold, um, started doing environmental and social impact assessments. I did a lot of geochemistry work, um, groundwater work, soil work, um, et cetera, and, and grew and grew to to you know manage larger projects for for mining companies um all over the world um worked a lot in south america um africa asia and then wanted to see what it was like uh to join industry so i uh, had the opportunity to join b2 gold uh when they're growing and and now really been on this wonderful journey as, as we've continued to grow over the last decade with b2 well it's a uh... I, I always find some, it's such a small interest industry and you always find some connections when you hear about somebody's past and, and you certainly piqued my interest when you talked about your, your role in safety and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, but let's talk about B2 Gold now and, and exciting company, uh, a million ounce a year company. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked about that briefly before the meeting, uh, before the session started, but uh, give us some background on B2 Gold. Yeah, so B2 Gold, um, you know, founded in 2007. Uh, we have three operating mines uh, in Mali, Namibia, and the Philippines. And yeah, we've grown this incredible growth uh, in just over a decade to a million ounces. Um, and actually, we continue to grow. So we're still a growth company, uh, you know, senior producer, but, but still growing. So we recently acquired uh, Sabina uh, Gold and Silver um, in the Back River Project. And so that's currently under construction. It'll come online uh, in 2025 uh, to continue our trajectory um, of growth into the future. So you've got operations in some pretty different areas. And I, I don't mean different just in terms of climate or geographical location, but but cultural as well. And, and all of them beg uh, for sustainable mining or for responsible mining. Uh, in your role as director of sustainability, give us a little bit of background on the, on the evolution of sustainability within B2 Gold. Sure. Yeah. So, so B2 Gold is really all about, um, you know, responsible mining. Our approach is, of course, sound business and economic sense and, and growth, but we, we partner that with, you know, environmental stewardship. And then we really, on the social side, try to just leave a positive legacy uh, for the communities and the coast countries that we work in. And, and so our key key role on the sustainability side is how do we take a finite resource, you know, which is gold, take that out of the ground, but how do we leave a lasting positive legacy uh, for our minds closed and, and we do leave? Um, and that's key to how we operate at B2. Let's talk about our heavy industry world tour brought to you by Savannah Equipment, supplying mining equipment worldwide. And Corporate Traveler Canada, helping companies travel the globe simpler, faster, easier. We are heading to events across North America and Australia and filming episodes on location. Email us at info at crownsman.com to be part of Crownsman's heavy industry world tour. If you're treating refractory gold or complex ores, then you need how to leach difficulty or varying feeds and recover more. It's packed with cases and papers on Albion process leaching technology, but it also has the world's first online calculator. It's free and you'll learn what capex and opex you'll need for Albion process to treat your feed. You need Albion process to liberate your refractory locked gold. To get your pack and use the free calculator, click the link in the description below. 
Bentec Group is an industry leader when it comes to design, engineering, and manufacturing. Bentec specializes in engineered safety and efficiency equipment such as access platforms, heavy-duty workbenches, work stands and trestles, material and equipment storage, and a range of lifting and handling solutions to maximize safety for your personnel. But that's not their only area of expertise. Bentec also spe- supply high-performance OEM replacement parts for mobile equipment. Bentec's rocks mining parts are built better, eliminating downtime and maximizing efficiency. Visit bentecgroup.com.au today to explore their range. Introducing Remscan by Ziltec, the game changer for rapid hydrocarbon soil measurement. Get accurate petroleum hydrocarbon readings in under 30 seconds. No consumables, no wait time. Just scan your sample for on-the-spot results. Perfect for emergency spill response, spill delineation, excavation chasing, and bioremediation monitoring. Remscan is trusted by top industries and backed by independent verifications. Make real-time decisions without the lab wait or expense. Discover more at Ziltech.com or email them at info at Ziltech.com. Remscan by Ziltech, the future of rapid soil assessment. Solving the complexities of operational efficiency, safety and compliance, and asset management in mining can be a significant headache. Madison Technologies understands these challenges, and with over three decades of industrial communications experience, they're not just a supplier, but a transformative partner in digitization. Madison Technologies accelerates the digital journey of their clients, and together with global technology vendors, they deliver practical real-world solutions. Visit madison.tech to discover how they can help you unlock future potential with Mining 4.0 solutions. I, I think one of the things, uh, people who are involved in, in sustain, sustainability in our industry understand it's a very broad term, but I think the, the public sometimes sees it as, as environmental. And there's so much more to it than that. And, and you touched on a few of those items. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, environmental is, is a, a significant component, but really for B2, it really comes down to people, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, and, and your communities and, and your host countries, because the people are the backbone of your company. They're, they're who you rely on. Um, you have to have good relationships with them, but also uh, the people are the ones working for you. Um, you know, they're the ones working at your operations and, and it's their land, their, their, their country and their resource that, that you have the honor to come in and, and, and to mine. Um, and so it's critical for us that everybody benefits, um, right. You know, the host countries that we work for, that we pay our taxes, that they benefit and that we employ local people, train and upskill, uh, the local workforce and, and leave as much positive impact as we can, uh, while we carry out our operations. Yeah. So, and, and of course, because you're in so many different locations, each of those has their own uh, challenges. Uh, what are, what are some things you're doing at, at some of your projects, uh, what I'll call overseas before we get to your, uh, uh, your operations overseas, before we get to your more local project for in, mm-hmm. in Canada. So, so the, the key, yeah, we work at these different jurisdictions and different cultures, but the key for B2 is really uh, back to our core values. Uh, transparency, respect, accountability, uh, and fairness. And th- those are Canadian values that we take everywhere we operate. And so, you know, when we go uh, into communities, first, we want to engage with them openly, honestly, early, um, because, you know, we don't want to be somewhere where we're not wanted. And so, um, you know, we engage, uh, create those relationships, uh, and we ask the people, you know, uh, what do they need? Um, you know, how can we support them? How can we partner with them? Um, and that, that's another key aspect is, is we do very much try to partner with our communities so that they can take ownership. Um, you know, they can, they can walk away with, with increased skills or benefits that can last, uh, you know, beyond uh, what we can contribute during, during our operations. So it's, and, and I'm, I'm assuming that, uh, there's there's a, a great focus on on local employment. I mean, it makes sense from a business perspective, but also from a community engagement perspective. Yeah, no, it's a key aspect of of our approach everywhere that we work is to employ as many locals as we can. Um, you know, we we work with our surrounding uh, immediately impacted communities to to ensure as many opportunities for for employment that we can. In many countries where we work, uh, you know, B two Gold is is one, not only the potentially the only wage employment uh, available, but by far, uh, you know, the, the, the highest wages that, that these people can earn in the region. So 
it's it's up to us, you know, to really ensure that these people have the opportunity to access those jobs. Um, and and we do have over 97 percent uh, local employment wow. across the company at all of our three operations, uh, which we're very proud of. And so, um, you know, we may have some more expat managers at the beginning of an operation in construction to get it up and running. But then we really try to work to to upskill the local workforce to to find uh, individuals, you know, with with skill and, and aptitude, train them, upskill them, bring them up into the management ranks. Um, and then we have uh, what we call technology transfer programs to ultimately take those those few expats that we do have uh, at our operations, um, find their counterpart uh, and the replacement. And, and it's that person's role to then essentially train uh, your replacement and, and train yourself out of a job. Uh, but the key is then to to work as much as we can to to have um, as many locally employed people as possible across the, across the board. SafeSite has developed a suite of innovative technologies focused on step change improvements that impacts vertical mining, shaft measurement, underground mapping and survey, mine rescue, and emergency response underground. SafeSite solutions introduce new possibilities in approach and efficiency while keeping every site safer. SafeSite solutions deliver valuable data that can quickly be turned into actionable decision data that allows effective and safe operation. Digital guide alignment will reduce shaft maintenance costs. Underground mapping drone technology that removes shadows for 100% accurate reconciliation. And mine rescue drones that extend the reach and range of responders on surface and underground. Visit safesitexp.com for more info. Hey, mining enthusiasts. Registration for CIM Connect 2024 Vancouver from May 12th to 15th is now open. Last year, this convention had over 6,800 participants from 60 countries, with 1,796 delegates, 702 booths, and 320 presentations. Secure your spot and register now at convention.cim.org. CIM Connect 2024, where quality and innovation define the experience. The metals and mining industry bears a significant responsibility for meeting the dual challenge of growing demand for resources and rising standards of living from an increasing global population, while also addressing the sustainability goals of the future. Aspen Technology is here to partner with industry leaders and help them achieve those objectives with solutions in areas of advanced process controls and asset performance management that utilize artificial intelligence and machine learning to optimize their mining operations for both profitability and environmental responsibility. With Aspen Tech, you'll not only reduce downtime and improve safety, but also minimize waste, lower emissions, and improve operational efficiencies. Their expert team is always available to provide support and guidance, ensuring that you reach your operational and sustainability goals. Aspen Tech, empowering the metals and mining industry to meet the dual challenge. Learn more at aspentech.com. So is, is there a, uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to get the, the word right. Is, is there a template? Is, is there a, a process you follow for, for every operation? Or is every operation so unique that you have to come in kind of from first principles and, and uh, with your approach? Yeah. So it, our first principles are those that I, that I mentioned, you know, fairness, yeah. you know, respect. And so from that, uh, you know, that desire, that commitment uh, to employ locally um, is what drives things. And we, of course, have processes and systems that, that we share across uh, our operations. But then every site requires things be, you know, fine tuned and, and tailored to to the specifics of that country, you know, culturally, you know, different legal requirements. And so, um Absolutely. Uh, and that's something that B2 Gold prides itself in is, is we're able to work in all these different jurisdictions because we, you know, we are, uh, well, a senior, you know, gold producer now, we still have a bit of a junior mindset. We're, we're still an innovative uh, and nimble company that, that can put in place, uh, you know, site specific solutions um, for any of these, any of these issues. So you've been, you've been operating in a number of different jurisdictions and in the recent uh, if, I, if I get this right, the recent acquisition of Sabina brings you into the more North American market, which is 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 different. Uh, a lot a lot of juniors start out locally and expand globally, but but you're you're kind of in the in the opposite mode. Yeah, I mean, you know, the B two Gold executive team has 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 operated globally throughout the world. Um, I myself have you know as I mentioned earlier operated. Uh, you know, Asia, South America, et cetera. Um, and so it's kind of like a homecoming, you know, for a lot of us to come back to North America. Um, 
you know, there, there's a lot of similarities uh, uh, between the Back River project and and a lot of the B2 Gold team uh, from the BEMA days working in Eastern Russia, you know, with, with uh, Arctic conditions. And so, um, you know, huge challenge, uh, you know, uh, for this operation. But, uh, you know, now we can we can take everything that we've learned around the world in these different jurisdictions, come back uh, and apply it here within North America. And it's a really point of pride for, for B2. Well, I'm, I'm going to bounce around a bit in for one of the things in North America, we don't, well, I shouldn't say North America, maybe Canada, we, we usually don't have any issues with water supply, like maybe we do in Mexico or other jurisdictions, mm -hmm. but, but you're operating in some areas that are very sensitive with regard to the amount of water available, watershed, water management in general. So that must be a, a key focus of your sustainability. Absolutely. Uh, you know, we've got a, several pillars in, in our different environmental or, or social um, uh, approaches to things. Uh, but water is at the heart of everything, right? I mean, uh, water is, everybody needs water. Everybody's, uh, it's critical for our operations as well. And so uh, we've actually, the last couple of years, been uh, implementing an, like an updated approach to our, our water strategy. And in that, you, you kind of touched on that is, yes, this, uh, this, this watershed approach. Um, where we're, we're going beyond looking at just our, our water use, uh, you know, our mills and our, our tailing facilities and our water storage and, and looking at uh, how do we ensure access to water for ourselves, of course, but also how do we ensure for, for other water uses, um, both uh, in the immediate term, communities, uh, are there other mines in the area, other, other significant uh, projects in the area, um, population growth, you know, everything on, on a larger scale approach to ensure um, that, that particularly also to throw into the, to the mix, uh, it's climate changes, um, that everybody is able to, to have access to, to safe, clean and reliable water. Yeah, well, I, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get to climate change in a minute because it's sure. uh, uh, certainly a, a focus, a focal point, but I, I wanna come back to something that you've, you've mentioned a few times, but I, I, I like to emphasize it because <clears throat> Because when we talk about sustainability, one of the areas of, of focus for you is what's there when you're done. Mm -hmm. And again, I don't know if I've worded that well, but you've talked about that a few times. And is what what do you leave behind when the mine is done, when when B two gold leaves? And that that's another area that I, I see from your website that you're you're very uh, focused on. Yeah, leaving a positive legacy. Is a, is a key aspect of everything we do. Um, it starts early, you know, starts in, in the, even the exploration phases of, of getting to know uh, the communities and the areas you're working in so that, that everything you do as you continue to explore as you, and then design your, your, your mind, um, how do we, you know, mitigate our impacts, of course, um, and, and et cetera. But then as we go into operations, how do we invest? It goes back to, we talked about, you know, employing locals and upskilling and, and training locals. Um, but beyond that, how do we invest in our communities uh, so that, yes, uh, when we do leave, can we leave um, other employment? You know, so, so we have investments in agriculture in, in most of the operations where we work, uh, you know, digital jobs and stuff is a possibility in the Philippines, um, you know, training with, with partnerships with industry. Um, and how can we take this again, this finite resource and, and turn it into as much good, positive, long-term, uh, sustainable growth, um, in these communities. So, so that when we do leave, we've left these communities better off than when we started. Yeah. I, I, you know, I, I, I always like to, to ask about that because I think sometimes people don't realize when we talk about sustainability, it's not sustainability during the life of the mine. It is then and after as well. So that's, that's great to hear. And, and you had mentioned, and, and now let's talk about climate change because sure. it's certainly, uh, the public is focused on it. There, there's lots of, uh, I don't know if pressure is the right word, but there, there's, there's lots of impetus for mining companies to set up programs and implement things. And I know B2 Gold is doing that. So maybe you can elaborate a bit on that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, B2 Gold recognizes that, that climate change is one of the most significant challenges like to the world, right? And so, and we also recognize that it's our, our responsibility to uh, 
you know, take, take matters into our, into our hands to manage our impacts. And so we've been on our, our kind of climate journey for, for over five, six, seven years now. And, and initially we started, uh, you know, at least understanding our carbon footprint, understanding our, our greenhouse gas emissions at our operations, expanding that, that uh, to scope one, to scope two, to scope three emissions, um, and then looking at climate risk. Um, and so the last several years, we've been, uh, you know, conducting various different types of uh, climate analyses, uh, scenario analyses, looking at financial impacts of, of climate risk. Um, and then with that, uh, we've made earlier this year uh, a commitment to reduce 30% of our scope one and scope two greenhouse gas emissions uh, by 2030. Um, and we're well on that, on that path. Um, and now we're looking at how do we decarbonize our operations in line with that interim target. Um, and, and we've done this, uh, we've been an innovator. Uh, we've implemented uh, solar facilities at both of our uh, Ochikoto and Fakola operations in Namibia and Mali. Um, hybrid uh, HFO and, and solar facilities, uh, first of its kind, fully autonomous uh, in Namibia and one of the largest in, in Africa, in, in Mali. We're currently expanding our solar facility uh, in Mali, um, and we'll get to a zero engine, zero thermal engine operation during the day um, uh, in Mali, which will be the first of its, of its kind. So we're very proud actually to be such an innovative company in, in the implementation of renewable energy sources. Um, but this is, again, just we're on this pathway. So. We continue to, to look, we're looking to uh, connect, we connected to the Namibian grid last year, which which also does reduce somewhat our, our emissions, but um, we're expanding that in, in Namibia. Uh, a third party power purchase agreement to produce an additional 25% of our electricity in Ochikoto uh, from solar energy renewable renewable source. And so last year in 2022, we, we produced uh, approximately 15% of our electricity from renewable sources, which for us being in, in the jurisdictions and the locations that we are is, is quite significant. And, and again, driving towards this 30% reduction uh, by the end of this decade. Uh, so I I could pretend to know what the acronym HVF, HFO means and sure. ask you to explain it for the audience, but can you explain it for me too? Sure. Well, so, so we were in both uh, the Philippines and well, in all three, Namibia and Mali, uh, prior to connecting to the grid in Namibia last year, um, we essentially our operations were on islands. We were not connected to a, to a grid, so uh, the options for for electricity then uh, are, are limited. Um, and HFO being heavy fuel oil, um, and so uh, it's it's not a clean uh, resource, right? So so um, we are working now to how do we decarbonize uh, you know our electricity generation without having access to you know. Uh, Clean hydro, your readily available access to, to you know a clean grid. Um, connection to the Namibian grid does help uh, somewhat, um, and and really it's a combination then of how do we look at uh, solar, um, which we've implemented. Uh, we're looking at wind solutions as well um, in, in these operations, um, and and you know potentially hydro or et cetera at some of our development projects. But yeah, first. The pathway that we're on is how do we decarbonize our electricity generation? Because until we do that, we can't decarbonize, of course, the rest of our, our operations, like our fleets and, and our materials movement. So, you know, the first part of this decade, uh, yeah, increasing the amount of renewables uh, into into our electricity generation, or while we are beginning to look at as well, other technologies, you know, battery electric vehicles, um, trolley assist uh, technologies in, in our pits. Um, conveyance of materials instead of uh you know truck haulage um in the, in the second half of the decade but uh but we're looking at those things now as well well that's a huge you know when when you talk about generated uh, a site that has to rely on generated power that's a that's a huge carbon footprint and and if you can go from generated power to renewables that's that's a, a big step forward a, a much larger change than than an operation in Ontario, for example, it's operating on hydropower. Sure. So uh, it's a big step forward. It's a big step. And and talking about in Canada, so our Back River project, uh, which will come online, as I said, in 2025, um, it's also in, in an isolated location, right? right? So yep. there's no no connection to the grid. So uh, we are looking, we're permitting right now. 
um, uh, wind capacity. And so uh, hopefully we'll have the permits in hand next year. Um, but we're, we're permitting up to, uh, I think it's 13 wind turbines uh, and a potentially over 50 megawatts of capacity um, that will be able to, to reduce the emissions from that operation by over 80,000 tons of CO2 per year um, and generate, I think, over half of the electricity for that operation uh, from wind. Um, and so we're looking at that with, with that operation to, to do, you know, to manage our impact, uh, do our part uh to manage climate risk for for us yeah so so looking ahead i mean you you've you've got targets you're working on you're innovating you're using new technology uh what what do you see i want to talk about this in two ways uh the the future with regard to sustainability for b2 gold and the industry in general and then a little bit about the future of b2 gold the future of sustainability um I mean, for, 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 so the, the rise of ESG, you know, in the last several years, I think everybody's been aware of that or seen that, um, there's good or bad opinions of, of kind of ESG is, is maybe a buzzword now. Um, for me, it really just means accountability and, and, and for B2 of, of you know, increased reporting and increased, you know, requirements, um, you know, some see that, that, that is maybe, you know, negative, uh, increased requirements on companies, but uh, for me, it's all about accountability. And, and so in the future, um, I, I think this, this ESG world uh, or framework will, will become more refined to really drive it at, at more accountability and, and more transparency of, of reporting on your impacts, you know, be it climate, be it water, be it uh, human rights, be it, you know, uh, really what type of social impact you're having in your communities, um, driving it real, real information and, and, and data to, to show, uh, that you are having a, a good impact, um, where you operate. And, and so, and that, and that complements B2 Gold's approach, um, you know, extent going in early and, and, and talking with communities about what they need. Um, and, and so B2 Gold likes to think we're at the forefront of, of you know, our, our engagement with communities, our, our development, um, trying to leave this positive legacy. And, and that's really where, in my opinion, sustainability in the mining industry is going. And, and you've got an exciting project uh, ahead of you or you're in the middle of uh, to establish a, a new mining jurisdiction for the company as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the Back River project is, as I said, it's it's exciting to it's kind of a homecoming uh, for a lot of us to work in, in North America or Canada specifically. Um, you know, it's it's a new one thing about B two Gold with this. You know, we work around the world. A lot of us we enjoy you know the challenges of new jurisdictions and new new climates and, and new communities. Um, you know, the Back River project uh, has a wonderful uh, relationship that they've established with the Inuit of, of Northern Canada. Um, again, opportunities to, to uh, the things we've talked about, to employ locals, to upskill the local workforce, um, of course, increase production, you know, uh, and, and again, uh, with the wind energy center, uh, mitigate our climate impacts and, and grow, uh, into the future. Yeah. And it is, uh, you know, the, I know from my personal experience, cause we, we, we've done a lot of work in the area and the relationships we've built over the years with the with the Inuit and the local uh, population has been has been very important to operations. So I can see from your value set and what you've done in other operations that that'll be that'll be a key part of the success at Sabina. Absolutely. Uh, you know, we there is an impact uh, benefit agreement in place uh, with the Inuit uh, that outlines our commitments. Uh, you know, payments to the the Inuit Association. Uh, local employment targets and et cetera that will be developed as we get into operations, um, training for, for Inuit, uh, community investment and development, uh, as well as procurement, uh, you know, commitments uh, to work with Inuit companies um, as, a, as a partner uh, in, in Northern Canada. Okay, and, and the, the industry in general, uh, any suggestions on what stock, on what gold stock to invest in? Um, I, I'm not uh, actually too, too. Not your department. <laughs> not my department. Not too uh, sophisticated, let's say, of a, of a of a stock or gold investor. Um, 
but for for me when when uh, we look at companies for example uh due diligence because we are still a, a growing company uh one key thing for me is is really looking at uh their performance but looking at their at their principles and their values um of what you know really what drives that company of, of how they'll be successful or, or not um is, is key in my opinion yeah i couldn't agree more and there's the there's a bit of a, a pun at play there because you look at their principles in, in terms of their values, but you also look at their principles in terms of the people. Uh, and uh, I think that combination of people and values uh, uh, often uh, can can tell a story and, and is the, the character of the company. Yeah, absolutely. And and you can see that in B2 Gold. You know, our executive team's been together for, for 20 or 30 plus years. Um, you know, I've been there a dozen myself already, and and really, um, we get good people into the company, um, develop them, um, provide opportunity to work in all these different uh, locations around the world, and and you find the right people, and and really, um, they can carry out your mission, carry out your your you know your values, and and uh, and you see it then in the performance, right? Be it uh, you know production and economic performance, or or maintaining you know again our our relationships with communities and and mitigating and our impacts on the environment. Well, I, I do want to, I do want to thank B2 Gold uh, because they have been a strong supporter of the Canadian Institute of Mining, Metallurgy and Petroleum. And mining now is a partnership between CIM and Crownsman. And uh, your own Michael Cinnamon is now, uh, is president of the CIM this year. And, and I worked yeah. with Michael when I was president. And so, uh, your company continues to support industry in a lot of different ways. No, I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, you know, working with Michael, I'd forgotten he's actually yeah, president of CIM right now. Uh, you know, Michael's all of our execs heavily involved in this approach, and 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 really they they carry these values uh, from the highest level down. Uh, that helps us then to just implement and and again back to the performance of the company. So it's a pleasure. So, yeah. So Ken, uh, before we finish up, is there some final words you want to leave with our audience uh, about sustainability, about B2 Gold, uh, anything you want to leave with them? Well, I want to thank you for your time. Uh, first, it's been a pleasure to chat today. Uh, and the sustainability, you know, really, it's, it's for us, it's about how do we, we take this finite resource? How do we come into a place, uh, operate uh, profitably, uh, you know, for B2, but how do we leave uh, you know, the place a better off, uh, you know, be a community uh, host country. And, and that's what's important to be too. And so, uh, we've seen that change actually in the industry, in my opinion, a lot more companies do operate that way. And it's, it's been a wonderful thing to see in my career. And so, um, the mining industry is, is, uh, I think in the right direction, let's say. Um, and so it's just, uh, it's a pleasure to be able to share that with, uh, with you today, Roy, and with, with your viewers. So thank you. Okay, well, thank you. And, and we've been featuring B2 Gold, a great supporter of CIM and the industry. And we've been talking with Ken Jones, who's Director of Sustainability. Ken, thanks so much for joining us. And thank you to our Mining Now audience for, for joining us on another great episode of Mining Now.